Hello and welcome to my channel. You may recall recently I did a video where there's a Michael Frank Fullerton, age 26, in 1986, went missing. His car was found, Capitol Hill, Seattle, Washington. Then there was also missing Ralph Allen Newcomb, age 35, who went missing in 1989, and his car was found, Alaska Ferry Terminal. Then we have missing Michael Douglas Wilk, age 36, 2001, and his car was found on Alaskan Way. All of these are found within the area, within a, a less than three miles apart, within that area where you could take a ferry or something like that, and none of them have ever been found. And then I found this, and I thought, well, this is interesting. It says the murders of Jay Cook and Tanya Van. I don't know how to pronounce the last name. I'm not even going to try to chop it up. But they were a Canadian couple who were murdered while on a trip to Seattle, Washington, November 1987. And those first three men, I kept thinking, well, maybe they gave somebody a ride. Maybe they offered somebody a ride or maybe they knew somebody that they were all acquainted with that needed to use their vehicle that didn't have a vehicle that killed them. I don't know. Maybe it's just somebody wanted to kill them, and maybe that person lived near Alaskan Way or the ferry terminal and killed them and just killed them, took their vehicle and hit it, and then parked the vehicle where they could walk home. But see, these people, it says maybe they gave somebody a ride that killed them. And so we're going to look at this. It says... Cook and Van, I don't know how to pronounce that, I don't know if it's Seilenborg or something else, but they met in high school and they had been in a relationship for about six months. On November 18, 1987, they left in Cook's father's bronze 1977 Ford Club van for an overnight trip to Seattle area to purchase parts for Cook's father's business. Cook and Van took the um, ferry in Vicojo Ferry from Victoria to Port Angeles, Washington. They then drove southeast on Route 101 to Bremerton where they boarded a second ferry to Seattle. A fuel receipt later found in the van confirmed that they purchased fuel on the road between Port Angeles and Bremerton. The pair was last seen boarding the ferry in Bremerton. Cooks and Van's families became concerned when the couple did not return home as planned on the 19th of November and did not make contact on the 20th of November they were reported missing. So it makes me wonder if it's not somebody that doesn't work at the ferry or on the ferry. Anyway, on the 20th, on the 24th of November, Tanya's half-naked body was found in a ditch by a rural road auger in Skagit County, Washington, a short distance south of Bellingham. She had been raped, bound with plastic ties, and shot in the head. Investigators initially considered Cook a suspect. That's crazy. Though both Cook's and Van's families vehemently rejected this possibility. I mean, why would he do that? That don't make no sense. On the 25th of November, her wallet and keys were found discarded near the Greyhound station in Bellingham. The van was found a few blocks away. Inside the van were plastic ties of the same type used to bind her, plastic gloves, and various receipts, including the Bremerton Seattle ferry ticket confirming the belief that the couple had taken the second ferry. However, her camera, which she brought on the trip, was missing and has never been recovered. On the 26th of November, Jay Cook's body was discovered nearly 60 miles from where Tanya's body had been found two days earlier. Jay had been beaten with rocks and strangled. The police believe that the killer was taunting them by leaving plastic gloves in plain view. I hope they collected them, and I hope there's fingerprints inside. Detective Robert Gibo of the Seattle Police Department said he leaves those behind as a sign to the police 
that you needn't look for fingerprints because I wore these gloves and he has confidence that there's not there's that it's going that there's nothing that's going to connect him with these crimes the police were in fact able to obtain the suspect's DNA from the van but there was no match on any of the criminal databases Despite the lack of a match, police believe that the specific manner in which the victims were killed, which has not been revealed in public detail publicly, suggests that the killer was familiar with the prison system. The lack of a match, despite a potential background, could be explained by the sus suspect having been incarcerated before DNA collection from criminals became commonplace or technologically possible. Investigators believe that the couple might have met their killer on one of the ferries, most likely the second one, and offered him a ride upon reaching Seattle. In the months after the murders, both victims' families received a series of taunting greeting cards featuring graphic descriptions of the murders. The cards bore postmark from Seattle, Los Angeles, and New York and were written by the same person. In 2010, it was announced the writers of the cards had been found a 70-year-old can Canadian transient with medical mental health issues. The police confirmed that he was not the killer and had no connection to the crime. Yeah, I don't know about that because he's leaving graphic... He's writing these cards with graphic details. Are you sure he's not connected to the crime? Are you sure the DNA is even right? Oh, I don't know. That's weird. But okay. Are you sure they... I don't know. Maybe, though. On 11th of April, 2018, a composite sketch of the suspect was released based on the DNA collected from semen. Oh, semen found on her trousers at the crime scene using a process called snapshot DNA phenotyping. Case also investigated uh, say genealogy by uploading the DNA to a public website same site that led to the rest of the Golden State Killer suspect, Joseph James D'Angelo. On the 18th of May 2018, the Snohomish County Sheriff announced that William Earl Talbot II was arrested for the murder. He was found guilty in June 2019 of two counts of aggra aggravated first-degree murder and sentenced to two life without parole sentences on the 7th of December 2021, an appellate court overturned the conviction of William Earl Talbot, citing juror bias. Prosecutors are planning on holding a second trial. Wow. I don't know enough about DNA to know which DNA, because there's different kinds of DNA ones. And this one has the phenotyping by the, I don't know which ones are the better ones. I don't know, but. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. And I don't know if that's related to those other three men, but I thought, well, I wanted to throw this in here too, because it's about the, you know, it's the same area and this is 1987, and the one guy, Michael Frank Fullerton, he went missing in 1986, and the, uh, Ralph Allen Newcomb went missing in 1989, and their vehicles were found by the ferries area, in that area, I don't know. One of them was found on Capitol Hill, and one was found near the Alaska Ferry Terminal. So I thought, well, I'll throw this one in here too, because of the location. Anyway, um, prayers for their loved ones and their family, and thank you so much for tuning in. Please feel free to leave comments. Have a great day. Bye-bye.